Hi and welcome to a new swatching video. Today we will be swatching the new Gansai paint sets that I unpacked in my art haul video a couple of weeks ago. If you are interested in learning more about these sets, you can watch that video where I explained what the sets are and why I bought them. But in case you don't want to watch that video, I will briefly mention that these paint sets are from the Choosing Keeping store in London and the paint in there is Gansai. This is Japanese paints that are something in the middle between watercolor and gouache. I bought two of their special decade sets. One is 1930s and the other is 1980s set. They are still brand new and unused as I wanted to swatch them on camera. So you can see that I still keep them in the original packaging. We unpacked this envelope in that video. But I haven't really used them yet because I wanted to swatch them on camera. I'm very excited to finally start using them. I'm excited to see what the colors are and maybe I will also do a quick sketch at the end. So I have two sets here. This one is 1930s set and this one is 1980s. Uh, I think I will swatch the 1930s one first, so we will go in a chronological order. So that's how it looks inside. They give you this card where you can swatch all the colors so you don't have to create your own card, which is very convenient. And this is how the colors look. This set was interesting for me because I like earthy colors. I like this muddy colors that are a bit more complex. They are not so bright and straightforward, I guess you can say. So this is a very interesting color palette. I mainly paint architecture and these colors are generally useful in my work. I use a lot of browns and beige colors, so I thought that out of all sets that they offer, this one would be the most useful for me. As you can see, they have eight colors in here. Six of them are quite muddy and they also include two bright colors at the bottom here. We will see how they look like in reality. I watched some videos where people swatch these paints, so I kind of know what the colors are. That's how I was able to pick my sets. But of course, watching paints being swatched on the screen is not the same as seeing them in real life. So I'm very excited to see how they actually look. So let's start. Uh, they have the names of the colors and they have numbers. I don't know if they have like general palette where all of these colors are included and then they just separate them into different sets. I have not seen any charts on the Choosing Keeping website and I don't even know Know what is actually the brand of these paints. So it just says choosing keeping on the box and that's it. I'm not going to pronounce the names because I have no idea how to pronounce them. These are Japanese words and Japanese is a difficult language <laughs> for me. I'm just going to swatch them one by one and I think it will be clear which color I'm swatching. This is such a pleasant feeling. when you dip your brush into the paint for the very first time, when it's so fresh. The color looks like yellow ochre. So if you look at the mass tone, it looks like it has some green in it, which is not how the yellow ochre usually looks like. But when you add some more water to the paint, it becomes a bit more like the true yellow ochre without any, without any green undertones. I think I will do this row first and then this one because if we go this way the paints that are next to each other can flow one into another because they will be wet and if we go like this then they will have this safe area in between them where the name of the color is written down.
I feel so bad for... ruining the untouched <laughs> look of these paints. But of course you can't keep them like that forever. This one is very similar to Naples Yellow. It's a lot more clear and a lot brighter than the previous one. This color can be very useful in painting architecture if you wish to paint architecture with this paint set. Although these paints are not exactly as traditional watercolor because um, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's something in the middle between watercolor and gouache, which means that these paints will be a bit more opaque than watercolor. But I can see that when you add a lot of water to them, then they look fine. They look exactly like traditional watercolor. So the next color. This one in the pan, it looks like uh, some PR 101 color. One of the most popular pigments. Yeah, it looks a bit like English red or Venetian red. I guess it depends on the brand, what they decide to call this paint. Yeah, I can see that the paint can look a bit muddy and a bit opaque in the mass tone but as soon as you add more water it immediately turns into a very clean and transparent wash so i think this row is something closer to the brighter colors to the lighter colors and this one will be a bit darker okay so the next color will be a bit different so as i mentioned at the bottom here the two colors here at the bottom they are accent colors added to this set in order to add some more interesting and vibrant colors to the whole palette to the whole earthy palette This one reminds me of phthalo green, the one that has blue shade. But the difference between phthalo green and this one is that this one granulates. Obviously phthalo green is not a granulating color and this one is. I don't know how well you can see it on the screen but when I try to move this paint around when I add more water or when I'm trying to put my brush inside this mix again and again, I can clearly see how the paint separates into blue and green. I think this is great that they decided to add some interesting colors because these two are definitely non-granulating colors. It's like you are working with gouache because gouache is obviously very opaque. It has this very even consistency. Gouache would never granulate and this is what gouache looks like when they added this color that is very granulating and it's quite transparent in the mass tone as well. I think they are immediately making this set a bit more special. Okay, let's go to the darker colors now. This one is a very neutral brown so we usually have red browns in the set and what else do we have we have yellow browns like ochre for example yellow ochre and this one is the classic neutral one 
It will be interesting to compare it with the other two colors because they are also dark, so we will see what they are. But for now, I would say that this is the neutral brown in the set. If I were to compare it with something from traditional watercolors, I would say that maybe this is burnt umber. Yeah, I think it looks like burnt umber. Or sepia, like sepia, Van Dyke brown. So these are all neutral brows. Okay, so the next one. Oh yes, dark blue. No set would be complete without a blue color in it, right? Blue is my favorite color. I like certain shades more than the others and dark blue is definitely the shade that I love. In watercolor, if we are talking about watercolor painting or the colors that are more useful in, in the practical sense, I would say that my favorite dark blue is Indian Chrome Blue, which is a bit more clear and a bit brighter than indigo or paint gray. But if we are talking about liking colors in general, I would say that I love indigo and I love such kind of colors. And I think it also granulates. I think it granulates and separates into blue and black or gray. I don't know if it's because of the paper. It will still be interesting to see how this paint looks like on a proper watercolor paper. Yeah, okay, so this one is definitely a neutral brown in this set, because this one... is closer to red brown. I would consider this one to be a red brown, so it's like English red, Venetian red, transparent red oxide, one of these colors. But this one, I don't even know what to compare it to. I wanted to say burnt sienna, but burnt sienna is a bit more red, I think. So burnt sienna would be something in the middle between these two colors. I guess, depending on which brand you use, sometimes in some brands, sepia or Van Dyke brown, they can be closer to this shade. In other brands, they can be a bit closer to this shade. And the last one. So it's a purple color. It's a very, very beautiful purple color. I like purples. Once again, when I say like, I mean in a practical way. So they are useful in my work. I have it in my main palette. Although I have a slightly different shade, I have dioxazine purple in my main watercolor palette and it's a bit more blue. This one I think is closer to red. So I know there are like two main shades of purple. One is dioxazine purple or dioxazine violet and the other one is quinacridone violet. And the dioxazine one is closer to blue 
and quinacridone is closer to red. I would say this one is something in the middle, so it's not blue, it's not red. I guess we can call it neutral purple. This color palette is very neutral in general, apart from this color, I guess, because this one is very bright and very green. Although if we consider that this is a separating color, which separates into blue and green, <laughs> this can also be called as something like neutral in between blue and green. So this is what the colors look like. If you are painting landscapes or cityscapes as well, this color palette might be very useful for you. I think if we are talking about mixing them, then purple is added because it's the complementary color for yellow, which means that you can neutralize these two with this purple, in theory. I don't know how well they will mix with each other in real life, but in theory, this one could be used to neutralize these two yellows to create less vibrant mixes. In real life, buildings are not that bright. <laughs> you still need to dull them down a little bit with a complementary color. In this case, it's violet. And green is a complementary color for red, which means that you can try mixing these two and see what happens. So you can dull down a little bit this one. And of course, you can mute this green a little bit as well with this red. And maybe you can mix this green with the other browns and see what happens. And the second set is the 1980s set. So let's open it. These might not be the most useful colors for me as you can see. But as I've explained in the art haul video, I just like 80s and that's why this set appealed to me out of all the sets that they offer. These pastel colors are amazing. And of course, I'm not even talking about this neon color. <laughs> it's so eye-catching. When you see this set, you look straight into this color and how well it contrasts with the blue as well. Let's watch them and just enjoy the look of these colors. And interestingly enough, I already have an idea what I can paint with this set for the demonstration at the end. <laughs> I can already see something complex and interesting in the pan. I can definitely tell that this set is not as straightforward as the previous one because there I was kind of able to identify that, okay, this one is close to yellow ochre, this one is English red, this one is indigo or paints gray. And I think this one will be a bit more complex. Obviously, I don't have any information about pigments, which would be a very useful information, by the way, if they included it, but they didn't. So we just have to guess. So yeah, what I was going to say is that in the previous set, even though we didn't know the pigment information, we could guess what the colors are. Maybe it will not be 100% correct, but it was quite obvious. In this case, I can see that these colors are already premixed. Here, for example, if we can say yellow ochre, Naples yellow, English red, these ones are non-traditional colors, so I have nothing to compare them to. Well, actually, this one reminds me a little bit of the hematite violet genuine from Daniel Smith Primatech color line. It's also granulating. It has some muted pink slash violet color in it and it has some dark brown particles so I can clearly see some granulation and this granulation very much reminds me of the hematite violet genuine. This one is a very muted color and the next one will be a very bright one in contrast.
You don't usually get such bright colors in traditional watercolor. Which makes me think that it might be ink or the paint can have some ink or neon pigments that might not be very light fast. It would be really interesting to do some light fast tests. I will probably do it in summer or in spring because now it's useless. We don't have any sun. I would compare this color actually to quinacridone violet, but this one is a lot brighter and a lot more vibrant than quinacridone violet. I actually think that this color is comparable to some reds or some, some colors from the violet slash red slash pink color family. I'm not a fan of these colors, that's why I'm not super familiar with this color family, but I know that there are some colors that look similar to this one. I just don't remember the names. It might be something like Quinacridon Violet Red or something. So yeah, if you are fans of these colors, maybe you would be able to recognize it. I love these muted greeny colors. I love looking at them and I like clothes in these colors. This color will be very useful in design. Like when you design things, you can use this color because it's very pleasing to look at. But if we are talking about watercolor painting, such colors are usually useless. <laughs> because they are very opaque, which means that it will be difficult to mix them with other colors. When you mix opaque colors with something else, it can give you very muddy mixes. So it's, it's a risky thing to do. Of course, you can use this color on its own. It will be, I guess, a bit difficult to find application for this color. Maybe it can be used for buildings, for architecture, I like this one even more than the previous one, but I can say all the same things about this color as I just said about the previous one. This one might be slightly closer to titanium buff. I guess titanium buff is something in the middle between these two. But yeah, I guess you can use these two colors in order to mute some brighter colors. If you mix this one, for example, with this one, you will get a pastel pink. Usually white or creamy colors are useful to create pastel shades. Someone has already added some white into this color. I guess this one looks like the mix between this one and this one. This color is already muted and a bit unsaturated on its own. Okay, so very excited to try this color. I have no idea what I can use it for. Wow. It's difficult to even look at this color. That's how bright it is. I've never ever tried anything even close to this color in what color. This one is definitely a highlight, not even of this set, but of both sets that I bought. This is the most unusual color I've ever seen. 
I think I will be trying different mixes with, with this color to see what I can get. I have my doubts about the light fastness of this color, of course. I think it is not light fast, but for a sketchbook work, it might be very interesting. I'm very curious to see how it will mix with blues because orange and blue are complementary colors. And I think it will be also a little bit interesting to see how it mixes with pastel shades. The next color, as I mentioned at the beginning, these two colors look so well together. Blue and orange are complementary colors. They always look nice together. Uh, and because this is one of my favorite shades of blue in real life and for painting as well. I mean, because it's an opaque blue, it's not the most useful color. But it can be used for the sky, for example, for water sometimes too. Not all opaque colors are useless in watercolor, so some can be used and be used quite often. And the last one. I wonder if that what happens when you mix this one and this one. I think the camera will never pick up how bright this color is. I'm looking at this color through the camera and I'm looking at it in reality and I can say that it's not as bright on camera as in real life. I think it was a very clever decision to add this color to this color palette because apart from this color and maybe this one, Everything else is very muted, is very unsaturated, very pastel-y. This one is a dark color, but everything else is light. And usually, if you want to create a good color palette, because this is a set, I guess they kind of expect you to use this set on its own. So it is expected that you can buy the set and paint only with this set. So of course, you need to have paints that will have different characteristics. We have some light colors, although I just think that these three colors are a bit too similar because this is just eight colors. <laughs> these three colors that look so similar to each other, it's a bit too much in my opinion. But yeah, definitely it was a good idea to add this color because it gives you an opportunity to add accent to your artwork. And it's good that they added this color because it will allow you to create some darker shades in order to achieve some depth in your sketches or in your illustrations. I think if we mix them together, they will give you a lot of opportunities to mix interesting colors because for example this one it will be very difficult to mix green you can maybe combine it with this color palette and mix greens with with these colors in this set there is no red so you can use this color palette in order to create some red mixes and red shade with this section of the palette let's see what we can create with these colors when I first started thinking about filming a swatching video of the sets, I thought that I would need to do some demonstration at the end, so it will give a better representation of the paints, plus it will be a bit more interesting for you to watch. At first I thought that I would base my reference around the 1930s set, because the colors are a bit more suitable for my subject matters. But then this idea struck me that I should paint Miami. As an ultimate 80s lover, I love playing GTA Vice City and I've been occasionally playing this game since the moment it was released ages ago. So when I was playing this game a couple of weeks ago, I thought that there is no better subject matter for the colors from the 80s set than the Miami Ocean Drive. It's like someone picks these colors based on this game and on this place. 
In case you have no idea what I'm talking about, Vice City is an imaginary city that is very very closely based on Miami and a lot of actions happen around the Ocean Drive. I spent quite a bit of time choosing the references for the illustration as unfortunately I've never been to Miami myself, so I had to pick a reference from the internet. And I decided to paint this hotel building from the Ocean Drive, famous for its beautiful Art Deco constructions. Now back to the paints. I must confess that I totally underestimated these paints. They are a lot more solid and serious than I gave them credit for when I first saw them. I don't know why, but I thought that these paints were more for fun rather than for proper watercolor painting techniques. I was thinking that I would use them for some simple illustrations in my sketchbook, but not for what I usually do with the traditional watercolor paints. I was wrong though. I think the moment I started mixing the first wash for my illustration, I was pleasantly surprised by how I didn't feel any difference with how I usually work with watercolor. They get diluted very easily, so if you want your wash to be transparent, you can achieve that by adding more water. They mix well with each other. Once again, because we don't know any pigment information, it is difficult to predict what mixes you are going to get and to properly compare them with traditional watercolor paints. But the basic logic works perfectly fine and you are easily able to intuitively mix the colors with each other and get a wide range of different colors and not only use the ones that are included in these sets. The two palettes that I bought go so well together, the whole time I was painting I couldn't get rid of the thought that I was so glad that I bought these two specific palettes. They are not only the colors that are nice to look at, but together they give a great range of tones for my subject matters. I was able to mix everything that I needed. Maybe some mixes were not exactly the same ones that I usually use and mix with traditional watercolors, but it was a good thing because it pushed me to think creatively and come up with some new interesting mixes. By the way, only when I was recording the voiceover for this video did I realize that I swatched the 80s set in the wrong order. I'm actually using it upside down and the colors in this watch card are not matching the actual colors, I think. So probably if you know Japanese or you know the Spains, you were laughing the whole time while I was swatching this set, but oh well. I also liked the consistency of these paints. I don't know how they are made, but they are a bit creamier than usual watercolor pens. When you dip your brush into the paint, it's not as solid as some watercolors are, which is extremely useful for dry and wet techniques. It's like these paints are always fresh and you don't need to do much to reactivate them. I also talked a lot about granulation during this watching. I haven't really noticed any heavy granulation while I was working on the sketch, so that will be something to explore in the future and see if the paints actually granulate or not. And as I've mentioned a few times already, the main and probably only disadvantage of these paints would be the fact that there is not much information available about them, especially about their light fastness. This fact means that you will not be able to sell or even gift your artworks to anyone because you don't know what will happen to them in few years. I'll run my tests in spring and maybe I will try searching for more information online, but for now these paints will only be for some sketchbook work, which is a shame because I absolutely loved working with them. Anyway, that will be all for today. I'll keep experimenting with these paints as I've had such a great time working with them for this overview and I hope that it was interesting for you as well.